McLaren 720S. First off, I'm honored that I was contacted uh, to drive the 720S on the last day that my buddy had it in his possession before shipping it off to be serviced in the mainland. So thank you very much, Ben. The McLaren 720S, so where do I start? Maybe it's just insanely bright neon green color, but dang, does this car have some flash. The twin hinge dihedral doors just scream, look at how cool I am. And although due to the large carbon sill and low seats, me getting in and out is definitely not the prettiest sight to see. I'm told that there is a method though, as owning a bright neon green McLaren with doors that go up force you to develop a type of swagger when getting in and out in a very classy way. Of course, all while wearing aviator sunglasses and a crisp suit. Now from the outside, the rear of the car is all exposed with the main surfaces being pretty clean and flowing, which gives it a very classic and sensual look. The only small issues I do have with the look of the car is the messy headlights and visually long or unproportioned space between the doors and the rear wheels. The headlights incorporate an air vent below the daytime rear lights, which make it look like a cat's eyes rotating 90 degrees to horizontal to the vertical. I don't know, when the headlights are on, it looks like there are like dark and heavy bags under the car's eyes, which I don't know, to me, it just looks weird. Uh, but to my eyes as well, the side view would look much better if the rear wheels were pushed forward just a tad. I don't know if it's just me, but the surface molding of the side between the doors and the rear wheels just seemed like the engineers took the well-proportioned car from the design team and they kind of stretched it because they needed the rear wheels to fit and to align with the transmission located behind the engine. Um, but that's just me. Uh, also, the car has a carbon tub which provides a super stiff chassis but results in a thick carbon seal that you really need to get over when getting in and out of the car. You know, the way the carbon tub was designed also makes the footwells for the driver and passenger very small and narrow. You know, it's a good thing that these cars are all paddle shifters because there is no way you could fit a clutch pedal in the footwell comfortably. The dead pedal is literally right next to the brake pedal. Uh, now moving on to the interior, it was a bit of a culture shock, you know, as I'm so used to Ferrari and Porsche and, and you know, that the McLaren's interior controls were just foreign to me. You know, Ben had to give me a tutorial on how all the controls worked, just like when you take delivery of a new car. The choice of materials in the car was also interesting with the engine and traction control modes surrounded by aluminum trim, which I didn't really like. Um, the remainder of the car's interior was draped in matte carbon and Alcantara, and for the first time in year, years, this car actually had control stocks. I mean, wow, I can actually use a stock when turning on my indicators. Uh, you know, moving on to the steering wheel, it was void of any buttons, which is strange coming from a Ferrari with no stocks and everything placed in the steering wheel. Um, but, you know, the seats were comfy and didn't quite hug me like my previous Ferraris, but then again, you know, all my previous Ferraris had carbon bucket seats and the 720S had the regular seats with electric controls. Now, speaking of electric controls, why do they put the controls on the inside of the seat where the central console is right next to it? Uh, most likely because of the carbon sill, but still it is very unintuitive. Uh, moving on to the paddle shifters, they were small, uh, made out of matte carbon and were affixed to the wheel, so they moved when the steering wheel moved and made a very video game-like click. You know, it did sound close to my racing simulator shifting paddles, but you know, either way, the travel of the gear, of, of the paddle shifters is very short and has no slot whatsoever. Uh, it is impossible to miss a shift with these paddles um, and just because of the travel distance is so short. Uh, you know, interior visibility was good and like I mentioned earlier, getting in and out of the car is different than any other car I have driven because, you know, part of the door is attached to the roof and the roof actually opens and moves with the door when you open it. So you know, you can use that open space to aid in getting in and out, which is kind of weird, but definitely useful. Okay, moving on to driving. So I first started the car, engine came to life and started to purr. You know, it was a very refined noise, unlike the unhinged noise from an actually aspirated engine from Ferrari or Lamborghini. It was very James Bond-like in a nice crisp suit compared to loud Italians with a flashy outfit and skinny jeans. Andrea. Uh, we then set off and immediately I could feel the huge reserves of torque under my right foot. You know, similar to other turbo cars, it had a thick and meaty torque power band when exploring the throttle low for RPM. And again, you know, the engine makes some noise, but nothing crazy. Uh, just keeping with the James Bond coolness under the radar vibe. After some driving, uh, my suspicions of the narrow footwell became uh, more apparent as I noticed that 
my driving position was really close to the center of the car. I followed Ben who was in my speciale and it was clear that he was seated way more to the left of the car than I was. Uh, I tended to hug the cat's eyes in the road to my left and as I slowly got used to the more center driving position, um, I eventually slowly veered towards the center of my lane. Uh, one of the first things I did notice was just how tight the steering and chassis was. There was zero, there was zero slop or vagueness with the steering, especially immediately off of center. The Ferrari steering has a slight vagueness on center at low speeds, but quickly firms up when going fast or loading of the suspension. But the 720s didn't have this issue and remained tight and alert doing low and high speeds, and of course with the suspension loaded. Uh, we went through some crappy roads on our journey and the chassis was so stiff that the entire car was literally rocking left to right you know but the amazing thing is that the suspension was so supple the suspension never crashed or bottomed out which makes me believe mclaren's special hydraulic suspension with interconnected hydraulic links were definitely working their magic but due to the stiff carbon chassis i was rocking left and right violently due to the undulations of the crappy road we were on uh, but due to the carbon chassis being so stiff you know, I believe that they set their suspension very soft with plenty of wheel travel uh, without negatively impacting the car's alertness and stiffness through the corners, which is, you know, pretty amazing stuff. Um, again, the transmission, the dual clutch transmission offered quick shifts without any drama and without any aggressive throttle blips and chassis shaking up shifts uh, like the Ferrari does, you know, always being a cool and comfortable cap. Uh, I don't particularly like the brake pedal feel as it did have a long travel before initial bite and it is a little squishy uh, when you hit the bite. Um, I just can't seem to tell how hard I am braking. I like it very short travel and very stiff at the top, uh, but it doesn't really matter when you're driving fast anyway as you will most likely be just mashing on the brake pedal before a turn. Um, but so this negative of not really knowing how hard you're pressing the brakes really only applies when you're in traffic and during normal driving. You know, you're almost about to hit the car in front of you as you're pressing the brakes and you have to press it a little bit more because you're not slowing down as what you think you would be. Uh, well, we eventually got to an, op an empty stretch of road and we really started to stretch his legs. I dropped her into first, put the pedal to the floor from about 20 miles per hour and the 720S showed off its wild and unhinged side. The acceleration was so brutal and pushed me back into my seat harder than any other car I have driven. And yes, even the Pista. Yeah, I was literally hanging on to the steering wheel for my dear life. power never let up as as I hit red line I was just redlining into second red line into third into fourth it was insane it pulls so hard above around 5500 rpm I, I can't even enjoy it it feels like a roller coaster ride when you take the first drop and you're barely in control and just say fuck it and lift your hands in the air and that is what the 720s feels like under full acceleration uh, it is simply incredible everything goes blank just due to the sheer pull of G-forces. At the time, I don't even have enough mental capacity during this acceleration. Just, I can't even listen to the engine note. I'm just, I'm so flabbergasted by the, the acceleration. It is batshit crazy and makes me realize how Ben in his 720S literally just walks away from my speciality even when we're doing speeds in excess of 150 miles per hour. So, after that, uh, stretching his legs, I start to slow down and I try to comprehend what just happened and then we enter the twisties.
handling is very good with very high limits. Uh, direct comparisons reveal that the transparency between wheel grip and chassis and steer feel is a little bit less than my speciality. It feels like there's almost like a thin piece of rubber sheeting between the suspension and chassis as well as the steering wheel. And this small amount of isolation gives me a little less confidence on knowing where the limit of grip is, but it, it still feels very stable and makes me feel like the car will break away a lot more slowly and gradually uh, than my speciality. Uh, in comparison, my speciality is very commutative and I can feel every nuance in the suspension to the chassis and steering wheel, although because it's so stiff and communicative, it feels like the entire, and the entire car will just snap oversteer once the limit is overstepped. So, you know, uh, in that regard, the 720S is a lot more comfortable and confidence inspiring uh, going through the turns. Now, now due to the 720S's insane amount of power and the high RPMs, I was very careful with the throttle when rocketing out of turns after you hit the apex. And I only use full throttle kind of once my front wheels were completely straight because you really have to be careful with the throttle uh, in the 720S because that massive turbo rocket punch will get you in trouble uh, if you are reckless. Um, anyway, it was this a really short drive. Um, we ended it at, at the boat harbor for some picks and, and a quick conversation. Uh, and then of course we, we then drove the previous route in reverse, but I hopped back into my speciality so Ben could have one final drive in a 720S before shipping it off to the mainland for service. Now this back-to-back -back drive in the same rows really got me thinking about the current supercar super market and being in Hawaii. You know, the 720S pros and cons, well, their pros really become cons in Hawaii. And, and let me explain. The 720S is a normal car when not driving hard. It may have an extravagant look with flashy doors and in this case, a very bright look at me paint job, but the true breadth of its abilities lie in its crazy acceleration. And in Hawaii, there are just not enough roads to take advantage of this ability. I know my perspective is slightly skewed and I'm not saying that my speciality can be fully exploded either, but it definitely can be exploited more than the 720S. And the piece that is similar to the 720S but is more exciting at low speeds with shorter gearing and a more linear power brand, obviously through electronic limiting, but its ability can be exploited more than the 720S. Uh, other competition include an F8 Tributo, but when you factor in depreciation, the cost of entry into 720S is a huge bargain. But even at that low price, is it really worth it if you can't exploit its main party trick whenever you want? You know, bottom line, the 720S is an incredible vehicle, but just not for Hawaii. And I am hoping the 765 LT will change that. And I hope to find out soon. So anyway, thanks for listening. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.